Okay, so I am about to start on my first mod. Um, I bought a second, second-hand Frankie, and somebody's cut off her sleeves, and they've uh, given her a bit of a haircut. So this is the one I chose because I had two of them. This was actually the first Monster High doll I bought. I got her second-hand, um, but she's wearing the other one's dress because it wasn't very good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroute her hair, which I've heard will take a long time, so we'll see. Um, I I picked up this uh, Brat doll for like 50 cents. I apologize to the Brat fans, um, but I, I'm going to cut off her hair, and I am going to reroute it into Frankie's. Um, I wanted to do a harpy creature. Whoops. I wanted to do a harpy creature. Um, so hopefully, um, I can get the colors to work, because green and brown is kind of, kind of strange color combination. So yeah, here's, here's hoping. You Frankie? So, step one complete. Oh, her hair is cut off. And somebody had said something along the lines of keeping hair, because you always need it around. So, I kept her hair, and I cut it off into a plastic bag so that I wouldn't make a huge mess. So now I get to pop her head off. Said to boil her, make the, pl the plastic softer. I'm going to see if I can pull it out without doing that first, but if I can't, then well, Frankie's going to get boiled. Sure, it won't hurt her much. A little bit of water and pulling straight down, and it came right out. And, yeah. Now she has a head. And there's this very large turquoise thing that was keeping her on. So hopefully I'll be able to get the head back on fine. So now what you need to do, um, I wish I had better scissors. I could have cut the hair off shorter. But I've got to go in through that very tiny hole with a pair of tweezers and pull out the, the glue that's in there. And then I will have all these little empty holes that I can start putting the stuff the hair through. So, yeah. that'd be neat for Frankie to hold onto her head. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. So, I got all her hair out with the glue, and that was uh, not fun. Um, and I noticed that when um, I put her hair under the water to try and get the glue out, that some of her um, eyebrows started to come off. So, she I was able to run her to hot water and just get her eyes off, which is good. So I've heard acetone can ruin the vinyl, so... Yay, Frankie! I finally finished my first mod, and it was... Well, it took a while because I didn't have all the materials right off the bat. And it, um... It was interesting. Uh, I definitely... Well, I, I kind of like her now. You know, I, I guess I had uh, higher expectations than what I actually got, so she doesn't look like what I had anticipated, um, but it's definitely a good learning experience, and I definitely will be trying again. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of a before and an after, I guess, and then just talk a little bit about, I guess, what I've learned doing it, and hopefully that'll help someone else out. Uh, okay, so... So this is what the uh, original doll looked like, pretty much. She had both her arms, um, but as you saw in one of the previous ones, you know, her hair was cut, the dress is messed up. This is just another one I got secondhand. Um, she's going to be my next one. So we shall see how she turns out. Alright, so this, and we'll see if I can get her in good so, so she's not too blurry. Too bright. Too bright. Uh. So. <laughs> I'll have to take a photo because I'm sure that if I go in too close, yeah, it just blurs the hell out. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Um, so anyways, this is my, uh, my harpy creature. Um, as you can see, she has a... Woo, very tippy stand. Um, okay. So she has 
a full re -rouche. Oh, she's not going to stand up properly now. And she has some wings. Whoops. This is a terrible stand. <laughs> she's really heavy. Her hair, like, tips her over a lot. Um, that is a... Let's see if I can get a better shot of it. Oh, the stand part came out. Okay, so it's... It was a, um, a keychain, like a broken keychain. And I just used a little tiny piece of wire and I just kind of wrapped it around. Whoop. I'm going to set the camera down or else this is going to be terrible. Jeepers, you just, you want to fall over, you're tired. You're sitting out in the sun all day. Okay, let's stand up. Alright. Very, very uh, top heavy. Something to consider when you're doing um, their hair. Okay. So, uh, what was difficult? Um, of course, you know, being my first mod, I just had to do everything the hard way. <laughs> I was going by, um, to an extent, what would be easier to do for materials and whatnot. So, um, you can cut hair off another doll, and that'll work, but I think that that made the reroute take longer. Um, I am got my fingers crossed about the... I call it the poking method. Um, instead of doing the knotting method, I think the knotting method also added a lot of time to how long this took. Um, when I was doing it, I wasn't sure that the brat head would have enough hair, so she does have some spotty spots on her scalp. Um, if you're going to be rerouting a doll like this, I would definitely recommend uh, priming and painting her scalp the color of the hair you're using or just, you know, one of the colors of the hair you're using. Um, because I kind of had to go in and do that afterwards and it was kind of rushed and whatever. Um, for her hair, um, I'm still possibly going to cut a little bit off the ends because they were hard to, uh, you know, get in a good shape. Um, I see lots of people doing boil perms, which I actually tried with the uh, tin foil. Um, as long as you get the base done properly and fold it around the base of the hair right before you start wrapping the uh, the hair around the tin foil. Um, as long as you have it nice and firm, beautiful, beautiful curls works wonderful. Um, the straw method I haven't tried that just with the tin foil, but you pour hot water. Um, definitely make sure you have a big enough bowl. I spilled hot water everywhere, including on me. It wasn't fun. If you're under a certain age, definitely get somebody adult like to help you. Um, but instead of doing a boil perm with the curls, I braided her hair and I had those little tiny cheap plastic dollar store elastic bands. And I just did little small hanks of hair and did braids in them. And I think it came out really nice. I haven't really seen uh, anyone else do a braid perm where you just braid her hair and then dunk it in hot water, dunk it in cold water and leave it for a couple days to dry. Okay, that being said, um, I didn't take her body paint off of her, her stitches. Um, you can, but everybody's very uh, cautionary about using nail polish remover, so I thought I would just leave them. Um, I did kind of wanted to use something to do uh, griffin feet, like bird feet on her. Because really, she doesn't look anything like a griffin. She's got wings, but whatever. Um, and I made the little shrug and the skirt. I think they came out really cute. Um, I'd love to do one in white with the furry stuff for Abby. Uh, the skirt was actually kind of hard to do. The little shrug is just, you know, uh, maybe like a, a four chain, if you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, crocheting's really easy to learn. Uh, a four chain circle with a three chain line attached to another three chain circle. So it basically looks like um, like a lollipop with two ends. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's two circles and then a line in the center. Whatever. Um, but just really, really easy to do and I think it looked nice with the kind of, I'm trying to go for a harpy look. Um, okay, so her paint. Um, I used... Tester's Dull Coat. And I sprayed it outside. I know people say... I'm going to get back up on the couch. People say to, um... To... What do they say? 
uh, don't breathe it in. I did it outside, um, and I don't really know if I should be worried or not. Uh, I wouldn't recommend being unsafe about it, but, you know, I felt because I did it outside that I was okay. I wasn't, like, sitting there inhaling the fumes. It does smell really, really strong if you do get a whiff of it. Um, and then I just left her outside to dry. Um, I washed her all up. I did two coats of testers. Thin. Thin is very important. Um, because then you won't have glops or whatever. Um, and then I had some chalk pastels and people say to rub them on some sandpaper and then you'll get the chalk powder and then you can use it to blush and blend, blend, blend. Um, but I just used the paintbrush, fluffy paintbrush on the piece of chalk itself and just got a little bit of color and did it like that. I did it like, woo, all over again. Some blushing around the side of her face. Um, and then I did, I think I did two more coats of testers. Let them dry. Um, and then I started doing the face paint. Um, the lips, you know, they came out great. You know, I started painting the whites of the eyes, and that was fine. Thin coats and all that jazz. And then I got to the eyelashes. And that's where I really, really disappointed myself, because some of the art that I've been looking at for, um, for people who have done this before, and they probably have done a lot more than me, um, the eyelashes, the eyes, they're just amazing and you know they're so vibrant and have so much color and so perfect and I just really can't wrap my head around how amazing they are and one thing that they're doing is they're being smart and they're using watercolor pencil crayons I tried it nothing happened it made the faintest lightest lines um, and it just wasn't working so I had some issues. Make her all blurry on you. Woo! I knock her over, of course. Yes. She's just exhausted. She's been through so much. Um. Yeah, okay. See. So, I did the eyelashes on this eye, and they came out perfect. You know, I just used the black. I had a little bit of purple liner. You know, it looked lovely. And then when I got to this side, I was having trouble with the angle of my paintbrush. And instead of having these lovely little wispy eyelashes, she has big, chunky, goopy eyelashes all around the top. Um, now I had to, like, set her down and pout in a corner for a little while. And I, I just kind of had to step away from her for a little because um, I was so disappointed. Um, but I'm okay with her now. You know, she looks pretty good from a distance. Um... I think it's a pretty good dry for a first one. Freckles came out wonderful. I love her freckles. I don't even know if you can see them. Um, and her eyebrows aren't even, but that's okay. It just gives her a little bit of a quirkier expression. But I'll definitely take a couple pictures and stick them on the end of the video. Uh, oh, crap. What else would I do? Um, I would do the poke method for the hair. I would... Uh, the testers worked fine, although when I was trying to rub some of the... Um, some of the eyelash paint off I rubbed too hard and I rubbed some of the powder off right on the arch of her eye there. You know, I could go back in with some more, but I'm just worried about what kind of lines that would create and I think she's oh right. Um, I would recommend getting some, you can use water, I used water on her lips, but there's painting materials for acrylics that help thin the paint and that might be preferable, but again I was just kind of, you know, jerry-rigging it or whatever you want to call it or I was just trying to you know do it with what I had and find what I could um oh crap what else would I do uh, uh, uh I would maybe try straight hair when I'm trying to do a reroute that might help um so I do the poke method instead of the knot method uh I got all excited and when I finished her hair I stuck the thing back on oh no my batteries are dying I stuck her head back on I wouldn't do that it would make painting easier to not have that done um, as for order, as for paint for hair, I think I'd still do hair first and then paint because the paint can wear off when you're doing stuff with the hair and I wouldn't want all your hard work to come off. So yes, this is my, uh, my first mod. So here I'm going to stop it because it's dying. Uh, 